Uh, hi, Ron. It's uh, Colin here from Longbangers. Um, much of the noise around the hip support centres around the perception of recruitment has been inadequate, both in terms of player recruitment and with Sean now leaving management recruitment. Um, recruitment and players and management are critical to the success of the club. We're wondering what gives you confidence that the people responsible for recruiting players and managers are qualified, experienced and good enough to be su to successfully recruit again? Well, I mean, I, 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 so I, I would agree with you a little bit on, you know, I, I don't know that I would agree with your premise of your question, uh, because I, I don't see where you see that the recruitment has not been good enough, other than on the coaching side, we, we took a risk with Sean, you know, that was it, and I, I'll take full responsibility for that. Um, it was a risk, you know, to bring in, a, we, we thought an exciting young Scottish manager with credentials and pedigree. Um, you know, I, I want Hibs to be an innovative club that's always kind of on, 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 on the leading edge. So that, that was a little bit of the thinking. And it's, you know, it's certainly I had before finalizing the deal with, the, with Sean and making the appointment, we did have this conversation about the risk for the club. Um, and it was a risk. And, and unfortunately, it didn't pan out. So it could have panned out and we would be having a different conversation. Um, yeah. Then on, on the I recruitment, I don't, I don't, in terms of player recruitment, I don't, I don't really buy the premise that it's not been good enough because I, I do think that when you look at the players that we've been bringing in, there's a certain caliber and level, perhaps a little bit on the younger side, and we need to maybe balance that out, and we have some holes that we need to fill. I think we're aware of that. Um, but I think if you look at the players that have come in uh, over the last uh, six to eight months, or six months, I guess, just mostly, um, you know, Harry Clark, uh, Rocky, uh, Dimitri, um, Jasper, Ewan Henderson, Mueller, Melkerson up top. Uh, you know, uh, th those are all quality players. Um, is there, is there... There's a lot of players came in, but I think we're looking at the team on Saturday. Not even many of them started, the, the guys that came in in January. So I think that's where we're going with it. You know, there was um, there was, a, there was a volume of players, but they, they were deemed not not available on to play on Saturday, uh, other than Ewan Henderson from the one, and Harry Clark, obviously, just back from injury. Harry Clark, yeah, exactly. Uh, so um, I think um, that's that's where we were going with that, rather than saying, um, so we're, we're bringing volume in, but I don't know if, the, we, we, were third, we were in third place last this time last year. We needed to add, to add a couple of bodies to make us better. And despite all the bodies we've added, we're seventh in the league currently. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, that's why we made the, well, that's why exactly why we've made the, the change. Um, you know, I, I guess my, my question would be, you know, and this is, at least is my perception and I, and I think probably shared and I, I actually, I know it's shared by others. I mean, I, I think our squad is better than it's showing. I honestly believe on a man, to, you know, kind of man for man. Uh, when you look at our squad, we, we certainly have, in my opinion, a top six squad. Now, do you know? Can we improve it? We need to improve it. The top, you know, the top of the at the top of the pitch, we've had issues. Losing Martin Boyle was not was not a, something that we wanted to do, and certainly was not in our plans. But circumstance kind of dictated that. Uh, having Kevin get injured, having uh, you know, Christian Deutsch injured, and not really kind of fully fit. Um, the, losing Dimitri, losing Harry Clark. These are you know these are all significant players who give us offensive um, offensive you know, kind of energy and, and uh, we've lost them. So, um, you know, we, we have to rebuild that. And certainly the top of the pitch is an area where we're looking to strengthen uh, this summer. But I think generally speaking, when I look at the recruitment and I, and I'm there because we've also brought some younger people that are not aware of, um, I think the recruitment is actually headed in the right direction. You know, you'll, you'll hit some, you'll miss some, that, that's part of the game. Um, but I, I, I do feel that generally speaking, we're, we're, we're headed in the right direction. I mean, I, I, unless, unless, unless you feel that, I, I mean, I, I'd love your, your take on it, Colin. I mean, do you feel that the team today, man for man, is inferior than it was in November? I mean, if you want to go through the list and, and, and send me a note afterwards and say, you know what, I'm happy to do that. But I honestly think that we've, we made a point of trying to upgrade, and again, we, you know, we, we've expanded our budget, we've invested in it, um, but I honestly feel, and I think the board felt, that we're better than we're showing.
we're better than we're showing. We're just not, we're just not delivering on, I think that the skill set that we have uh, and the quality that we have. And you know, that's a, that's a, a, the beautiful thing about football is that everybody has an opinion and that that's my opinion, but, but, you know, I, I think it's seconded by quite a few people. Ron, you mentioned the injuries and the, um, like I say, the, the, it was a lot of young players brought in and like I say, the sale of Martin Boyle as well. Were these things considered when evaluating Maloney's performance as manager, considering he never had these players at his disposable, disposal? Yes. I, yes. So the, the, the discussions which, which we've been having for the last, uh, you know, month or so and, you know, informally and then more formally at, at board meetings and then special meetings to discuss football. Um you know, I, 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 we were concerned about the trend, to be honest with you, uh, just of how we were heading as a, as a, as a, as a club. And obviously, when we, when we had our, our meeting on Monday to kind of see where we were, uh, we looked at all the options. The option was one to make the change, which we eventually, um, you know, kind of very, very decisively uh, supported, um, or, or perhaps give Sean the rest of the season just and evaluate it the rest of the season, or, or, or stay with Sean and give him more time. And I think there was a general feeling, which one a board member kind of presented, which I, I think a good insight was if, if we had been seeing the team progress collectively as a team week to week, that there was really improvement or individual players that were improving, playing under what was under Sean and what was going on, then, then you know, it would have been perhaps a, a cause for us to say, you know what, we're headed in the right direction. He needs more time and we can get there. But I, I think the general consensus was that we weren't seeing that improvement week to week, that players were not better. Um, and, um, and then you know, it, it came again, fairly definitive that, that it was the right time for us to make the change. And making the change yesterday, you know, not, not waiting till the end of the season. Um, again, it, it's a question of the fact that we're on the right track and obviously by by the decision you you know that the, the the majority of the board a significant majority of the board felt that um that that was not the case um but but by making the change yesterday we give i think ourselves the biggest window to be able to hopefully you know explore the marketplace to see who's available uh, to vet the potential candidates and to make a selection before preseason in june and hey, maloney had mentioned of a, of a rebuild over the summer in terms of the transfers. Is that still something that's the plan? And did you just feel that he was maybe not the man to kind of oversee that rebuild due to the promises on the pitch? Uh, I, I think so. I mean, we lost some confidence in, in his ability. I mean, that obviously when you, when, you, when you essentially terminate a manager, there's a lack of confidence in his ability to, to turn it around. Um, so, I mean, that's obviously part of the decision-making. But the commitment, I, I think, is there for us this summer. Um, we have some holes. We have some holes that we need to fill, um, and and I think we're we're very focused on that. The only thing that's a caveat, which you know, it's, it's a real caveat, is we, we we like to get the manager in place before we make some of these final decisions because ultimately, you know, they're going to be playing for that 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 individual, and and we want to make sure that he's comfortable uh, with with whomever we we bring to the club. Hi, Ron Matty from uh, Long Bangers here. Um, from the outside looking in, uh, it looks like the club is uh, regressing rather than pushing forward. It's our, our second bottom six finish in three seasons. We've lost to Hearts at Hamden twice in recent years. We've gone through a manager there in uh, four months, 19 games. Um, the, the question we'd be getting asked from our listeners is to, to ask hey, kind of what's going on at the club and what are you doing to give us the confidence that it's going to improve going into next season? Well, I, you know, I... I... I can I can understand that perception, but I would I would just kind of counter it by saying that the club is doing a lot of things right. I mean, I I, I know that we are making improvements across the boards, to be honest with you, but we have not gotten the football right. And if you don't get the football right, it kind of permeates everything, and and you know it doesn't it, it creates a a dark cloud over what, to be honest with you, at every part of the club, including the football, we've made some significant progress. Uh, you know, we have a kind of a, a better organization and structure at, at HTC. We've made some investments in terms of the infrastructure and we're gonna to continue to make those investments. Um, our development team, which was non-existent, is now fully, uh, fully funded and, uh, and, and the roster is, is, is a healthy roster. 
Um, we've made some investments in terms of our budget. We've year to year we've um, we've added uh, you know at, at least thirty five percent to the player budget, uh, and almost sixty. And on the business side, which is because that actually fuels investment in the club, you know, with the, the investments that we've made in the infrastructure at, at uh, Easter Road, uh, the partnerships that we're getting in terms of uh, corporate sponsors, the new initiative that we just launched for, um, for hospitality. I know that fans don't really care about that as much, but that fuels growth, which provides revenue to invest in the football. And, uh, you know, ultimately, if you look, I can, I can, um, I can kind of summarize our strategic goal in one, one sentence, revenue growth. For us to compete at the top of the table, we need to have top of the table kind of money. And you know, right now, when I arrived at Hibs, um, two years ago, two and a half years ago, we were a distant fit, closer to Motherwell in terms of revenue than we were to Hearts. And, uh, and right now we've bridged that gap substantially had we finished in the top six we would have been knocking on the door but we did not finish in the top six which is a major disappointment but if we finish in the top six and are competing for europe we're in the we're in the hunt with aberdeen and hearts in terms of revenue and that's really for us to compete we need to be there and fans need to understand that you know you, you can't be spending i don't know I, I don't know what's a good example, but you know, a little Toyota money and expecting that you want to drive a Ferrari and everybody wants to drive, everyone, everybody wants us to be a Ferrari, but for us to have a Ferrari, we need to have the money to drive the Ferrari. And, uh, and so I would, I would now I, I, I see the progress. So this year, despite the failings on the football pitch, uh, we have grown our revenues by 50%. And that's progress to me. Now we didn't get the football right. I agree, and I, you know, I, I apologize to supporters for that, because it's 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 absolutely, you know, my responsibility at the end of the day to make sure that we get the whole organization functioning correctly. Um, but I, I apologize to um, to supporters for for not delivering on that because that's my ambition as well. I, I I hope that the fans see a lot of progress in many 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 areas. The football has not been right, and I and I get it. I absolutely get it. And we got to get it right. So we're going to continue to work until we get it right. That's the key. Hi. Ron, Liam from Down the Slope here. Um, I just want to ask it, your, your first AGM you shared a very exciting and comprehensive uh, five year plan for the club. How does sacking a head coach four months into his tenure and relieving Jack, Jack Ross of his duties earlier on in the season fit in with that five year plan? Does it delay it in any way? Um, it, it doesn't really, uh, that it would step back, you know, we kind of reset, we have to reset. Um, so, you know, that unfortunately, you know, it's, uh, believe me, I, I think I'm a, you're very disappointed in where we are. And I, and I take full responsibility for that from a footballing perspective, but I do think that again, the division and the, and the plan that we have is a very solid one and we're making progress. So we need to get this next appointment right, is my, my absolute hope. You never really know, but um, you know, we, we, are, or we are going to be more diligent and, and hopefully make the right appointment. And I think we're gonna give the new manager, um, the, which we, we gave, you know, the, the one thing you, I, I think you can, whether perhaps it, maybe Sean might, might not feel this way, uh, but I think Jack certainly felt this way and that, you know, we, we, the club stands behind its manager, supports its managers. Um, and we're going to do that. We're going to do the same thing with the next appointment. Um, so it's, um, you know, unfortunately, we, we, we took a risk and, and it didn't pan out. And, uh, and, and Ron, I guess you could say we could have given him more time, uh, Sean more time. But, um, but I, I, I think given the circumstances, we thought it was the, the right thing to do. Which but creates instability, which is not good. So we want stability. Hi, Ron. Oh, uh, just you in from down the slope. Yep. Just on the back of Who's what there? you've said. Just on the back. Uh, it's you in from down the slope. Um, just on the back of what you've said there. Um, oh, how are you? Ian? I'm good, thank. How are you? <laughs> um, what measures can we put in place to ensure that we get the head coach 
correct this time and hopefully we're not in this position in four, six months to a year? Um, well, I mean, uh, we, we are going to, I think, be a little bit more diligent, take a little bit more time, which is, again, we have two months to, to try to get it right, to get it right. Um, um, we're putting together a, a we, we've already started, obviously, the work to, to see who's available and who's out there. Um, and um, I, I think to some degree, we're probably going to be a little bit shy, a little bit more shy about too many risks in what we do. We probably want, want somebody who's a little bit more um, uh, more experienced, I think, just to, can, can come in and understands what it's like to, to manage a, a professional club of the size of Hibs. You know, I, I don't know if it was in this call, or, but the previous one, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we, we did take a risk with Sean, but but you know, it's, it's a tough club. I mean, for you to, for this to be your first rodeo as a head coach and manager and you making the decisions, it's a club that's, you know, it, it's big. It, there's a lot of expectations. It's a demanding. It's a very visible job. Um, and I think we probably need somebody who's been there before uh, so that they know exactly what to expect. Um, and, um, and and we're going to we're putting together a to the candidates, uh, so we're going to be a little bit more thorough uh, in our process, and uh, and hopefully that will help help us get it right. Hi, Ron. Uh, firstly, thanks for obviously taking the time to do this with us. You know, given the the decision that was made yesterday, um, you know, there's been a lot of discussion online. You know, as fans, we see a lot of the the fan media side of things, and there's been a lot of discussion online recently. Um, about the sort of identity change within the club. You know, we've had Sue McLernan leave the club recently after such a long period of time. You know, our former kit man was at the club for so long. Colin and Kenny Miller, both Hibs fans, worked for the club as well. What would your message be to fans who feel that the club is going too far in a commercial direction, you know, and losing that sort of, you know, in-house Hibs feeling around the club? I guess it depends on what the fans want. Do they want a homey type? I, 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 I love Sue, uh, Colin, Kenny, terrific. They were terrific. So I, there's nothing, you know, I, 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 there's nothing that I can say other than they were terrific at, at the club. Um, you know, to some degree, you know, Colin opted to leave himself, uh, Sue as well. Um, you know, these are not uh, decisions that we made. But ultimately, I, I guess what we're trying to do, and, and that was part of the plan, is to professionalize the club. If we want to compete at a certain level and we want results, et cetera, we need to bring excellence and a winning culture to the club. If we just want to be average, which I think to some degree the history of Hibs has been about that. You know, it's just, it's okay. Things like persevere to me, don't really inspire me because it, it means that you never quite get there, that you're always trying, but you never get there. Or hibbed it. That to me has got to disappear from our lexicon. We cannot hib it. We got to win. We got to compete. We got to be excellent at what we do. And, and so when, you know, people, uh, and to do that, you need to bring top professionals to the club, top performers in everything. And uh, the whole idea here was to build, and it is to build, a top-notch organization. Now, that means we're caring, we care about our staff, we care about people, we want to create a culture of, of real integrity and camaraderie and, and collective effort. Um, so, you know, yes, I mean, some changes were made, um, but to be honest with you, I, I, I think when you look at the caliber of the professionals at the club today. We are much ahead. Look at every metric, other than the first team performance. Other than the first team performance, which I grant and I not acceptable, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. Um, if you look at every other measure, our sales in terms of commercial, up. Our sponsorship value, up. Our sales in the store, up. Our engagement with fans on social media, super up. Uh, new products, up content, content, top notch. Uh, the development team investment, it's there. The infrastructure at HTC, new canteen coming, the new uh, pitches, um, all 
good. The, eight, the U18 team, phenomenal. Um, what else can I tell you? I mean, so, so when you look at all this, you have to say, you know, the club is moving in the right direction, but I get it. We did not get the football right. And it's, that's, that's costly, very costly. Um, so we got to get it right. But I, 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 I don't, I don't really buy into the fact that we're not, we're, you know, we're not making progress. I think we're absolutely making terrific progress. Um, All right, guys, I'm just going to say, we're going to have to wrap it up fairly quickly, if that's okay. So just a couple more. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, Ron. This is Calvin from the Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. Um, strong opinion. I love the strong opinion. Hey, you were on our podcast but, earlier, if you remember. I know, earlier, I know. Yeah, appreciate that. But no, no just very um, before you decide, before you made the decision to relieve Sean Maloney of his duties, did you have a short list of candidates already there uh, with replacements for him? Or are we back to square one sort of in terms of looking for a candidate? How far along are we in that process? Uh, we, we did have a list. You know, I think a, a good club always has a list. You, you may not look at it because you, you don't want to undermine the manager you have. Uh, but, but ultimately, you know, I think any good club always has to have some kind of succession planning. Uh, probably one of the most curious things that I learned early in my, uh, in my due diligence when looking at hips, you know, the, the, the average tenure of a manager in British football is 18 months. So uh, it's... Uh, you know that's uh, that's substantial turnover. The mm-hmm. the Alex Ferguson's at Man United for thirty years, or the uh, Werner's at Arsenal for twenty some odd years. Those are exceptions to the rule. Uh, mm-hmm. But we need stability. You know, we need to have kind of. Hopefully, my my goal is to have managers that are with us for four, five years, six years, and they 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 succeed to such a level that they move on to higher and and better clubs. Um, so. Yeah, you know, we I haven't gotten that right, no question about it. Uh, but we always have had a list, um, and we do have a list now. We've polished it up here in the last uh, few days, uh, and we're you know we, we do have some candidates that we that we feel are attractive options for us. Okay. Last Thank question, you. then, please, guys. Thank we're you. We're already in the dialogues. Oh, yeah. It's all right if we get one. Yeah, last one, please. Thank you. Hi, uh, it's Gavin from Hibs.net. Um, so in the interest of talking about sort of professionalizing the club and integrity, I think a position that's obviously key to what we do from the footballing perspective, which is the area you've identified isn't progressing, is obviously the head of recruitment. And I think, um, you know, to, to sort of ask a direct question, but I hope you take it at face value, just be interested to know what qualities our head of recruitment has to hold that role and whether because of the connections to yourself, that position might actually be untouchable. No, no position is untouchable. No, no position is untouchable. I would start by saying that. Whoever is not doing a good job at the club and is not contributing to the success of the club is not going to work. And I'm not going to, you know, what you will find in me is a commitment to, to Hibs, I think second to none. And we want to be absolute, I'm not going to trade off, uh, trade off a commitment to excellence um, if it's not happening. So I, I you know, I, I know it's easy it, to me, to me, to be honest with you, I, I get, I get why people ask the question whether Ian is, is the right guy for that particular job. Uh, I get it. He's my son, but I think he's working extremely hard. He has very good insights. Um, and he's, he's put together, I think, a very solid team to help him. But he is just one player in a team of recruit, uh, the recruiting department. He, he doesn't make the decision. He, doesn't, he coordinates the vetting of the options that the club has. That's really what the recruitment department is doing. At the end of the day, we have a committee that decides largely to some degree, you know, we're not, the manager has to some degree the final say, right? We're not going to, we're not going to stick the manager with the player that he doesn't want, but we're going to bring to the manager the best options. And the recruitment department, what they're doing is essentially vetting the potential candidates. Are they available? Can we afford them? How much do they cost? Uh, what, are the, what would be the personal terms? Those kinds of questions. That's the homework that's being done by the recruitment department. But the recruitment department isn't, um, isn't kind of making the decision and who comes. So I, I think we're trying to make a mountain out of a molehill with this particular issue, um, because I do feel that the recruitment department is 
I mean, I see the candidates that they're bringing to the table and there are lots of them and all good. And it's just a question of picking the right one and you hope you pick the right one. So I, I, I know that this is a, is a little bit of a, a niggle for some people, uh, but you know, I, I, it, I just see the, re the recruitment department at this point has six people. And I, I, I do say instinctively the work that's being done there is quite good. Um, you know, we, we, I mean, I, I, again, the proof will be in the pudding, but you know, I, I, unless I'm missing something, I, I, I do think that we've made some significant progress in terms of the caliber of player that we're, that we're bringing to the club. Um, now, are we going to get some right? Yes. Are we going to get some wrong? Absolutely. Uh, that's just part of the game. The whole idea here is to get more right than wrong. But, um, but you know, I, I, I get your question. So I, it's not, Gavin, it's not like I, I'm taking uh, offense to it because I, I get why you asked the question. Uh, but, you know, this is not a, he, you know, he's, uh, he, I, he's my son, but I, 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 can, I can tell you uh, that I think he's working extremely hard with the team to do the best for Hibs. He's as committed as we all are to making this a phenomenal club. Brilliant. That's great, guys. Thank you very much for, for jumping on. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Just Invite just me to your podcast. Invite me to your podcast. I'll come. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. Very good. Take care, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.